ideal woman would be a single mum. Once I'd finish with her. <laughs> it's a joke. I'd pay for the abortion. <laughs> yeah, I got you again. I fucking wouldn't. <laughs> Let's talk about something a little bit more serious. It can't all be slapstick abortion stuff. Um, <laughs> my first wife was from Thailand. Well, don't, because you'll, you'll feel bad. It's actually quite a sad story. My first wife was from Thailand, and she died of testicular cancer. <laughs> Probably the best way I could describe it is a twinkle cave was an outie. <laughs> I saw a transvestite in a miniskirt. I thought, that shows a lot of balls. <laughs> <laughs> Right, well, I feel we've warmed up. Let's try some properly offensive jokes, see how we get along. 99% <laughs> of women kiss with their eyes closed, which is why it's so difficult to identify a rapist. <laughs> Let's have a little time out there <laughs> and discuss the rules of the gig. <laughs> Feed line, punch line, I'll take care of that. And then you can either laugh you can laugh and applaud, I'll be flattered and delighted. Or you can go, ooh, <laughs> in a disapproving style -y. What you can't do is laugh, applaud, then look round and go, ooh. <laughs> Not having that. <laughs> Let's give it a go. I saw a headline in the Evening Standard. It said, football rapist quiz. I thought, was that a story or a competition? <laughs> Well, it's probably as good a time as any to talk about how political correctness works in stand-up comedy. Because some people think it's a free-for-all. You can say whatever you want on stage because of freedom of speech. That is not the case. There are rules and regulations that govern what I do. Basically, how political correctness works in stand-up comedy is, if you're directly affected by something or involved in something, you get a free pass. You're allowed to joke about that thing. So, for example, homosexual people can joke about being gay. Disabled people can joke about disability. Black or Asian people can joke about race. Those are the rules. So. These two paedophiles walk into a park. <laughs> Child abuse, there's a touchy subject. <laughs> I saw a headline in the paper, it said, please smash paedophile ring. <laughs> I thought, good, let's see how they fucking like it. <laughs> Some people eat roadkill, have you heard about this? They take stuff that's been mowed down on the streets, they scrape it up, they clean it, they cook it, they eat it. Fine, but what you've got to accept is some of these kids have got families. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a couple of speeding tickets last year. I've got to be super careful now. I've got six points on my licence, so I've got this special device. Some of you have probably got it too. It sits on the dashboard, tells you if there's a speed camera in the street, makes a beeping noise. It goes beep, 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 to warn you there's a speed camera. Also makes a noise if there's a child in the road. It goes ba-dum, ba-dum. <laughs> Last week, I ran over a kid carrying a symbol. <laughs> but um, shh. Come on. <laughs> What's not to like it? It's a joke about killing a child in a music hall style. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever had this? My girlfriend made me fire our cleaner because she said the cleaner was too good looking and she didn't want her in the house. How mental is that? She was a really good cleaner. She was especially good at getting spunk out of hair. <laughs> Did you know every day nearly 4,000 serious sexual assaults occur in my mind? <laughs> in America, in Oklahoma, where that fertiliser bomb went off, they've now got a garden of remembrance. <laughs> and it has come up a treat. <laughs> So every cloud. <laughs> These kids in American high schools, I'm sure you've read about them, 14, 15, 16 years of age, they go into their high school with automatic weapons and handguns, they go ape shit. They shoot 20 or 30 of their fellow pupils before turning one of the guns on themselves. What is their fucking problem? <laughs> Do they not know where the staff room is? <laughs> they could be heroes! <laughs> I was in Germany recently doing a comedy gig. I was flown out there to do one of these corporate gigs. I thought, comedy, Germany, it's missionary work. <laughs>
went out there, did, you know, did a comedy gig. The gig went fine, but on the way back, there was about a three-hour delay at the airport. Now, I thought, that's not a problem, you know. I've got an iPod and a computer. I was quite, you know, busying myself. I was quite happy. The guy I was travelling with, the guy that organised the corporate gig, was livid with this three-hour delay. And he said, with no hint of irony, he said, yeah, say what you want about Hitler. <laughs> at least when he was around, the trains ran on time. <laughs> Oh, yeah, but think about where they were going. 